That man, Dan Parks, has the challenge of slotting the ball between the posts. What he will have to contend with is the breeze. On a normal still day, he wouldn't concern him too, himself too much about that, but there is a really stiff breeze blowing in his face, although it's not stiff enough for him to need one of his mates to hold the ball down. Let's see. If I'm being charitable, I'd like to use the wind as an excuse, but I don't think I can. That was um, really not at all good from Dan Parks. No, it was, it was a bad connection. And, you know, it's very tough for him coming off the bench after 10 minutes. He, he'd been sat in the stand thinking he might have been getting on in the second half. Now, I know it's easy to say that you, know, you have to be focused, but to come off the, off the bench cold and then almost the first thing you do is take a penalty, not quite in front of the post, but not far off it, but you'll be very disappointed. All you needed to do there was a good contact. Get a good contact, get in the game, and see what happens after that. Let off for South Africa. It remains scoreless. Ruan Pinar has us back underway. That's one of the many replacements we've had so far. Hugo Southwell chases his own cut, kicks. Lamont manages to put the box under pressure. South Africa knocked it on. Scotland have the advantage should they need it. Blair, this is Jacobson. You'd have heard Dave Pearson say the advantage is now over. I think that's the third time now, Andy, South Africa have been penalised at the breakdown for just diving over the top. Yeah, and Dick Pearson will have to make a decision, obviously, sometime soon as that, if that continues. I mean, I'm not sure at the moment, uh, at this stage, but I mean, field position would suggest that he'd be looking at yellow cards soon if it's the same player. But even if it's team, of, team offences, you sometimes see referees going to the card. But Scotland, you know, this has been a completely different start. You can see he's just gone straight off the, off the ground. If he'd stayed on his, on his feet, he'd have been perfectly legal. But because he came off it, the Jatty, the, the replacement who came off the bench, he went to ground, and that's why he's been penalised. John Smith, as the captain, has every right to, uh, to query a decision, but I'm not at all sure what he was querying there because Brian Majati flew over the top. Now, this kick is even tougher because it's closer to us on this near side touchline. Blot out what's gone before concentrate on something behind the posts a little advertising hoarding perhaps and try and put your team ahead he's done it has he oh no oh dear and immediately you begin to think this could become a problem as the match wears on I'm going to look at a glass half full that was a, a better connection for Dan Parks there maybe just didn't judge the win too often but you know, trouble with Dan Parks the crowd will start getting on his back because he's one of those players that polarises people's opinion people either like him or they dislike him there's a lovely bloke off the field but it should be 6-0 and he will know that what a take from Pierre Spies Janchez goes long and he was outside his 22 and the kick went straight into touch now, more than one or two signs of rustiness in the box a week ago in Cardiff, and after a bright start, we're seeing one or two hints of rust here as well, Andy. Yeah, very much so. I mean, they, I, I was uh, sure before the game that Scotland had to match the Springboks in the first 20 minutes because Wales let them get away last week, and then Springboks, all they did was back their defence to hold out, which they just did. Obviously, it's nil-nil, so it's, nothing much has happened. A couple of missed penalties. But... Matfield doing what he does best, stealing Scotland's line-out, and this is Habana. January. Ruan Pinar, he's got a big boot on him. With the wind. A couple of bounces into the arms of Hugo Southwell. Peterson, well taken. Now he chases his own kick. Lamont's underneath it. And he was brave and he did well to fend off the challenge of Peterson that was rapidly following up. Last foot, last foot, Scotland! He the scrum half. Southwell offers his services. Dan Parks. This is Janchez. Presses the lift off button. Tackled by Barkley. January. Juan Smith to ground. Scotland have won the ball back. Blair with possession they and neither South Africa would have expected. Ross Ford drives them towards the halfway line. Parks again. Kicks. Entirely sure about that. January had bags of time to find A.D. Jacobs. Smith, Janches, over the top. 
very difficult angle for Dan Parks to deal with. And having won the turnover, Scotland are now finding themselves in a position of some peril. Very much so. Both teams are really relying on turnover ball at the moment. That's where the excitement is coming from, really. This was Ross Fordy again, had a good game last week, and this is where probably we need to see more of him in the loose. He's a good ball carrier, but Scotland just didn't quick ball. Look, you can see it's there. But Scotland weren't able to keep that momentum going by getting quick ball. And that's the key. That is, defences are so good these days, you must get quick ball. Well, Gregor Townsend is, um, is watching on in the studio. Your, your early thoughts, Gregor? Well, I think Scotland have uh, competed very well. I think they've limited South Africa's possession. Now there's, a, there's obviously a few changes with, with Dan Parks on for Phil Godman and Hugo Southwell, so I think you'll see more of a kicking game, more high balls going up and uh, playing around Mike Blair. And I think uh, Mike will take the pressure off Dan Parks over the next 10, 15 minutes. That's a major readjustment going on in the Scottish back line. Midway point of the first half. This to give South Africa the lead. Oh, and uh, now he's botched it. I think the wind is, is creating some real uncertainty amongst the kickers because Dan Parks and now Ruan Pinar have uh, both glove kicks, Scotland reversing the blood bin. So uh, Dan Parks is done for the time being. I dare say we'll see more of him as the match wears on and Phil Godman is back on. What we are hearing, though, equally significantly perhaps, is that um, Chris Patterson um, will not be coming back, just as you were suspecting, Andy. Well, and uh, we know that Scotland's lack of ability to score tries, we've had to rely on Chris Patterson's goal kicking and that's not there today now, so someone else is going to have to step up to the mark. Charge from Pierre Spice. Tina, lovely ball out from Habana. Really quick hands to get that ball away. And South Africa again with John Smith carving through Scotland's defence, approaching the 22. Back is Borta. Repelled. A.D. Jacobs. In cutting some lines himself, A.D. Jacobs. Here goes Spice again. The line's getting closer and closer. And this is as threatening as the box have been all match. Juan Smith. The beast, you will hear the locals. Still going for the line. The relieving peep of Dave Pearson's whistle, but South Africa were going forward and they will have an attacking scrum in a very handy position. Well, we just saw what South Africa are all about. Power, power, power. Nothing much going on here, but it was just big players taking the ball in. This is the first part of it. Good hands by Habana. But then the, look at the big guys. John Schmidt came in there. Then it was uh, back his boat had a run. The beast himself had it going. Scotland were, were making tackles, but they were passive tackles. They were getting right in behind Scotland. Now then, big scrum. Big scrum needed from Ewan Murray. Best tight head in the land at the moment. Perhaps. Time to do his stuff. The uh, mangled Jenny McIntosh a week ago. The All Black debutant. And doesn't even need to scrum because South Africa have conceded the free kick and that's an interesting move from your own 22 just invites pressure back on this is Janches back to Peterson right up there it comes hey, January Tina Joanne Smith cutting back inside there were three Scottish defenders waiting and as a result they win the ball back Blair into space I think he was hoping that Lamont might be in closer attendance Peterson though fluffs it Ball went backwards and Scotland gained ground that they might not have been expecting to. Yeah, very much so. They got a quick turnover ball and I don't think Rory Lamont realised that Scotland had turned the ball over because when it was kicked, you see a John Smith goes in there. Big look at three Scottish forwards make good hits. And this ball comes out very quickly. And Mike Blair knows that there's nobody back home, but I just didn't see Rory Lamont read it nearly as quickly as Mike Blair did. Force of so back is Borta. No advantage, he's playing on the ground. First defence, knock on my green. Scotland will have another go. They will have the scrum. Oh, what a try would do for them. What a try would do for them. Not cross the opposition's line since Romania here in the World Cup 14 months ago. Flanked by France, England, and New Zealand twice. 
and it's now closing in on six hours without a try here. But Scotland beat England in that in that period, and it proves that you can win the odd game with just penalties, but you won't win more. Well, this is a decent position to try and launch something. Space. Oh yeah. Crouch. John Smith back in the centre of things. I asked him what hurt the most after playing at tight head in Cardiff a week ago, and he said his nose. Sit down six. Blair. Now then. Lamont over the 22. They need quick ball here. Quickly recycle it before South Africa can get the defence organised. Jason White just decides to put his muscle into it to try and reset the ball. Blair was caught up there, but the ball went backwards. Hog to ground. Blair again. Lamont, interesting. It'll come down with a question mark. It's a real test. What a test that was for Conrad Janches and how well he dealt with it. That was outstanding play. A bit of a gale here in Edinburgh, underneath his own post, it's a high ball, and he had the wherewithal to take it. Victor Matfield was the furthest back, here goes Berger. Hands off, a rather ineffective challenge of Southwell, but Scotland get the penalty. No, you're playing number one. Now, is this an interpretation? Are we having a, a, another little debate here, Andy, about the experimental law variations, or is South Africa just being a bit dull? No, I think they're being dull there, because what you're saying, joining from uh, from the side, well, it's joining in front of the back foot, obviously means the same thing, and uh, Umpton Aweera, the, the loose head, just came in the side, and normally you see that being penalised when it's the, def the defending side, when somebody defensively comes in from the side, but that was obviously the attacking side, they took the ball in, and what he was trying to do was just seal the ball off. You can see here, Schaltberger takes it in, Eventually, there's a good tackle goes in there by Ross Ford. Jim Hamilton's there. Now, watch him. He just comes straight in from the side. You can just see it. He then goes to ground. He never went to the back, the back uh, most fruit, and just came in. You'll see it here from this angle better. I'm telling you, the number one idiot comes straight in the side. Great decision by Dave Pearson because normally you would say in, in, uh, in defence you'd be penalised but not in attack. And I think that's a good refereeing. And Scotland have changed their kicker. It's the third kicker of the afternoon and it's third time lucky. Phil Godman, the Edinburgh fly half. Put Scotland ahead, finally at 